evening, friends and family. It's Leticia. I am the Crafty Curator. I am back with part two um, of the Whip Parade, um, which is going to be part of a series to go through uh, my 16 bin stash cabinet and find out what's in there. Um, that includes whips, it includes kitted up projects, and patterns. And I'm just going to kind of go through all of it, um, one video at a time, to record what's in each bin so I can take inventory of it and I can know where um, my stash is um, and what I have. So this video took a little bit of a turn and that's why I'm doing this kind of um, disclaimer, for lack of a better word. Um, I pre-recorded What's in the second bin? I did the first bin last week, and thank you guys, all of you, for the warm welcome back to Floss Tube. I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you, everybody who watched the last video and, and showed me some love. Um, but I wanted to pre record what was in the bins so I could find out what's in there to see if I had something to um, work on for March. For hashtag Stitch Asia, um, which was created by Abby Bella Stitch um, to stitch on anything Asian themed throughout the entire month of March. 100% here for it. So I decided I was going to pre-record one of the bins to see what I start seeing what I have in there. And then next week, um, I was going to upload my next video, which you're actually watching now, um, to show my active whips and my progress over the past couple of weeks and attach that second bin recording. So I was in the video recording, and you'll see it in a few, and I was like, I don't know how I wanna do this. Do I wanna do um, a bi-weekly update with my active whips, or do I wanna do like a weekly update to show you, you know, continue with the whole whip parade, stash parade thing? And that's where I decided maybe I'll do a weekly update to show what's in the bins, and then every other week I'll share my active whips. And that being said, I just kept recording and went into what was in the second bin. And it ended up being an hour-long whip parade video. So that's what you're about to see, but I wanted to explain it because you might hear me referencing um, what I might have shown you in the previous video that I didn't actually show you because I'm not showing active whips and this is not next week. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know if it did, but what you're about to watch is just a whip parade video um, of bins number two and three in the 16 bin stash cabinet. Stash cabinet, stash storage. I'm still struggling with what we're gonna call that. Um, so that being said, Again, I just wanted to thank everybody for all of their love last week um, and just explain what you're about to watch and why some of what you hear might be a little bit off. But the good thing is, it's a whole bunch of projects that I'm about to show you and my progress and that's what we're all here for anyway. All right. Um, so I hope everybody's doing well and enjoy the show. Hello friends, um, if you're watching this, you just got finished watching um, the first part of my video. I'm actually recording this today on Saturday, February 20th, 2021. Beautiful, beautiful Saturday. Freezing cold, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Um, so I decided today that I was going to film a preview video. It's not a preview. Pre-record my whip parade video because Abby Bella Stitch is introducing hashtag Stitch Asia in the month of March. So what that means is for the month of March, we stitch on Asian inspired cross stitch. Um, and that's exciting because there are so many patterns um, that are Asian inspired. 
um, whether it's from China, Japan, Philippines, India, there's so many um, areas of inspiration um, for Asian stitching and Asian inspired um, beauty in stitching. So one of the things that I wanted to do was get a kickstart on looking through my stash. Like I said, today is February 20th. This starts on March 1st, or it's throughout the month of March, really. She didn't specify that it started on March 1st. I'm about to sneeze, which I did in my last video. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, thank you, whoever blessed me. Um, but anyway... What was I saying? So yeah, it doesn't necessarily start March 1st, but it is throughout the month of March. And I absolutely intend to um, participate in that. Um, something else that starts on March 1st is Emily Eclectic Possessions Stitch Along for the Pandemic Sampler. Um, I wasn't prepared to talk about this. I might have already talked about this in the previous segment, which I probably will. So I won't go into deeply because I barely remember the name of it, but I think it's called the Pandemic Sampler. Um, and I think I have a plan to completely change the colorway. We'll see what I come up with, but I'm definitely going to start that on March 1st, I think, definitely. Hashtag I plan not to plan in 2021, um, but I definitely want to support my girl and that's her birthday sale and there it is. Um, but I'm absolutely going to participate in hashtag Stitch Asia in the month of March. Um, so that was a very long winded introduction to me saying I am pre-recording, um, the segments for the next whip parade, which is the video you're watching right now. Um, so this is part two of, um, the whip parade. Uh, I have two bins out. Not sure if I'm going to go through both of them. Um, because my, what do I call this? This, the, what do I, what do I call this guys? The stash, the stash bin, the stash, whatever, the stash cabinet. Um, I think a solid half of it is all whips and the other half is stash kitted or patterns, but not started. We're going to go through all that crap before all is said and done. Um, definitely not in one video. Like I said, it's going to be an extensive series, but series, that sounds, sounds preposterous, doesn't it? Um, but I'm pre-recording so I can find out what I have in here that would apply to Stitch Asia, hashtag Stitch Asia. So welcome back and let's dive in because that's, that's all I'm recording right now. I'm not showing any whips right now because I probably already shown them to you. This is me rambling. Um, one of my favorite mugs, my craft octopus mug. Hopefully this is not coming to you in reverse, but you see there is an octopus on there that has a sewing machine, knitting, crocheting, cross stitch, photography, and what's this last one? Scrapbooking? Gift wrapping? I don't know. Something with a piece of paper. But it's funny because I'm a novice sewer. I, I you know, I made a thing or two in my day, but nothing to be too proud of. I'm the only one that would really love it. Um, so it's funny. So I definitely sew. Definitely knit. Definitely crochet. We all know we cross stitch. And I'm not big into phot photography, but my husband is, and my daughter's boyfriend is. So that's, you know, it's a pretty great mug. And then what it says is craft octopus, noun, plural, a person who cannot stick to one creative hobby, a skilled individual in many art forms, one who expresses themselves artistically in many different areas of the creative arts. If ever there was, was a mug for me, or us, I should say. So let's dive in. I think I feel a pair of missing reading glasses in here. So this first whip is in a so much to love bag. Um, this is a fairly old-ish so much to love bag. Um, 
I don't think this was part of the bag of the month. I think this was when I first started discovering that I liked and needed project bags. Um, prior to that, I was that, you know, Ziploc girl. In many cases, I still am. We are likely going to find a Ziploc bag in here um, before all is said and done. Um, but this was one of, definitely So Much to Love is one of the companies that um, I got started with, with project bags. And I started off doing her bag of the month. Um, I think I did it for a year or so. Um, and then there was Evertote. We're not even going to get started with Garon Toten bags. And we're not even going to get started with Garon Toten bags. I think I'm going into my second year with them. I don't know. No regrets. So looking in this bag, I already see a bunch of things that I love and miss. So we have a pair of scissors. I should probably put these scissors aside because I have so many random scissors. What in the world? Seriously. I have so many random scissors in project bags that it's probably, all right, first bag, we already have two random scissors. It's probably part of the reason why I keep buying more. So this is Amtrak by, hmm, a pair of reading glasses there. Amtrak by Sampler Cove, who quickly became one of my um, uh, favorite designers. I love everything Sampler Cove has done. I know that I was enabled to start this because of Caroline. Now, what I can't remember is if she finished it. Caroline, did you finish this? I want to say you did, but I don't remember. And she's doing hers in the call for colors. And I completely changed mine up. Um, I used some Gloriana silks for this one. And I am stitching this on 28 count Monaco, if the feel of this is right. And here is my progress. Oh, I absolutely love it. It's good. It's so good. You might hear kids outside playing in the snow. So, gosh, I love that. I believe Diana, it is Kismet, just finished a project with this multicolored thread. I want to call it Highland Gardens. We're going to look in a minute. But um, it calls for rosewood and India ink, two different colors. Three different colors actually. Rosewood and India Ink by Gloriana Silks and Dapple Gray, range number 965 by Needlepoint Ink. And I just completely changed up my colors to include Sassy Green by Gloriana Silks. I don't know why I have this runny nose. Um, yeah, Highland Garden Dark, DK actually, by Gloriana Silks. I think, I don't know, Diana just finished something and I swear that that's what she had. That's what she used. And I am also using Purple Night Sky, which is the sister color to one of my all-time favorite colorways by Gloriana Silks, which is Velvet Night Sky. But this is Purple Night Sky, which is equally delicious. Okay, those are the colors that I'm using. But yep, yeah, that is the first whip, Amtrak by Sampler Cove. And just for the record, more so for me than for you guys, what I'm looking for right now is bin number two in the stitch cabinet, which is what I'm now going to call it. The second bag is a very fun, so much to love bag. Um, I believe that I sent this bag as a gift to Emily as well, the very same bag. I want to say this was her first cloth project bag. Um, so yeah. Beautiful little owls that remind me of those Russian dolls. Um, FFC is what I wrote on the tag. FFC. Funky Fish Carnival. Oh, I haven't seen this one in a long time. Oh, let's see the progress that I have. This is one of my very few, very few. I have a lot of patterns, but not a lot on the go 
hate. Oh, look how good that looks. This is so much fun. I'm so glad we're doing this together. Funky Fish Carnival by Heaven and Earth Designs. I want to say this is three or four pages. And this is one of the needle minders that I made called Fancy Schmancy Saurus. Random buttons that I ordered off of Amazon. Um, and, uh, random novelty buttons that I ordered off of Amazon and stuck some, what you call them? What are they called? Magnets on the back. Let's see if I have a picture to show you of what this looks like. We don't have time for this, so I'm going to go ahead and insert a picture here. And just so you can see it again, that is where I am. And look at that back. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that like that, that's what my back looks like. I'm proud of it. All right. Funky Fish Carnival by Heaven and Earth Designs. Next, So Much to Love Bag. Gay Paris themed. Now this, there was a finish in this. I don't remember what was originally in this bag. It might have been Tribal Monkey before I moved it into the bag that Diana, it is Kismet again, made as a gift for me that she gave to me when we went to the very first floss tube retreat. A beautiful tribal bag that we will definitely show here. This is a little Quaker-esque by somebody. Blue Ribbon Designs, maybe? <coughs> Excuse me. I think I have a little bit of a cold coming. Not that. I think just a little cold. Um, a little Quaker-esque. There we go. I love this design. Blue Ribbon Designs is one of my other favorites. Very simple. Some little motifs in between letters. And... Again, that's my start. There's the back. I don't know why I'm showing you the backs. I like seeing the back sides of fabrics. I just like seeing it. I think it's, you know, nobody cares about the back, but I think it takes a lot of effort to get people's backs to look really neat and nice. And I, I just have a lot of respect for that. And I try to do that, but you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now this is fun. I think I'm using Variegated Penny Rug by Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. I think that's what I'm using. I think. But I also have this hank in there from Silks For You. And actually I'm using this. Yeah, because this is more purple. I think I started out with that maybe. I don't know why that's in there actually. So let me stop lying. I have no idea why it's in there. But this is what I'm using and I don't have the number for silks for you but I know it's in um, my notes somewhere um, on Instagram or where somewhere but it's not in here that's the bag that it's in the next one is a Garon tote bag that I got on discount because the kitties were facing in the wrong direction but I don't care it's got a black cat like Miley um, it's got a little white and gray cat like Frankie and it says, I meow Paris, but the fabric was upside down. It's right on the back, but upside down on the front. And for that reason, it was a discount. Now this is one of the very few times that I actually wrote on the Garon Toten Bag um, tag. And this is Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Manor, 28 count mushroom Lagana. I started it on 8, 15, 19. This is what that looks like. There's a hoop in here. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take out all of my notions. Notions? Whatever. Yeah, that's a notion, isn't it? Is a hoop a notion? I don't know. And put those in a better place. Oh, looky here. We have another pair of magnifying glasses and a pair of scissors. 
let's see what we come up with at the end of this. This will be fun. Fun fact, I can't see my stitching with my prescription glasses. I can't can't see them. I can't see my stitching anymore with the naked eye. I can't see my stitching with my prescription glasses. I can only see them with these, like the little dollar store or Amazon five pack for $10, whatever. Um, really weird. But when I started, I could see 25 count, 28 count with the naked eye. It, things change. Here's my start on that. We're just going to run with it. That looks nice. It looks really pretty, doesn't it? This is another needle minder I made. It's a little, it says brave. Is that what it says? Yeah, it says brave. It's upside down. This was something random I just got at Michael's or Joanne's. And as I eloquently put earlier, I just stuck a magnet on the back of it. And that's how the crafty curator makes needle minders. This is my floss storage system for my Valdani threads. Some Ziploc snack bags. Some of you use floss away. This is how the crafty curator gets down. And I have one of those fun cable cable ties that I use instead of the rings. You guys know about these things? You can get them in bulk on Amazon. They are um, cable ties that I use instead of those floss rings. You get like a hundred of them. One day I'll show them because I have them in here. Um, get like a hundred of them for a lot cheaper than buying three or four metal floss rings for however much they charge for the DMC pack. Much more economical. So this one is Autumn Quakers in the I Meow Paris Garon tote bag. bag. Here we have another So Much to Love bag. It definitely has beads in it. I don't know why I got that close. I think this is Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Woods, it is. This was a sad tale. So this is a Mirabilia that I started. I think it was a birthday start. It's got a bead pack stuck in the pattern. Lily of the Woods. I think this was a birthday start. And I had this beautiful um, fabric that was hand painted and I wanted her to lay a certain way you'll see in a minute because it has a moon on it and picture her lying on that branch underneath the moon and yes you can see that is iridescent hopefully opalescent or rather excuse me hopefully you can see how that will stitch up with her laying on the branch under the moon. Beautiful, right? It's off center. It's not in the right space. So I have to frog all of this. And that was simply something that I was not ready or willing to do at the time. And I'm still not ready or willing to do that. So into the bag she went. And there she sits until the mood strikes. But what I'm not willing to do is put this pattern on any other piece of fabric. So, a dream deferred. What's our time looking like? We're 20 minutes in, guys. So this, this piece of string is a project bag. Look at the books. I made this. I made this. This was one of my very first project bags that I ever made. Forgive me, I don't remember the tutorial. The primitive, it's not the primitive hair. Hmm. Primitive stitcher. Hopefully between now and the time that I edit this and put it up, my ears are ringing. What is going on with me? Hopefully between now and the time that I put this video up, I will remember and I'll insert her name here. But I used her video to make this bag. It is far from perfect, but I love it with all my heart and soul. I love the fabric. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you know I'm a book lover. I also made my husband a face mask out of this fabric. 
yeah. Um, in the inside, it's just a pinstripe, gray and white pinstripe. Very simple. What's in here? It's in a whole entire. Ooh. This is actually good in everything. Let me see. Is this the one I bought from Tracy? It might be. Tracy had a sale. Good in everything by Rosewood Manor. My mouth wanted to say Long Dog Samplers, but it's not. Good in everything. I think it was from Tracy. If this is platinum. Yeah, it is. This is from Tracy. Nope. This is 32 count Queen Anne's Lace Joblin. I think this, this was her. She had a huge live sale. Um, and she had the entire kit that she was selling. Um, oh yeah. Um, and I purchased it. I already had in a forest grill. And for some reason I look at this as a companion piece. So this one, as it's patterned, it says, in this our life, exempt from public haunt, find tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, Sermons and Stones and Good in Everything by William Shakespeare, which is beautiful. But I changed the quote. I, I changed it to read, and she goes where she will without pretense and arrives at her destination, prepared, and to be, prepared to be herself and only herself by Maya Angelou. And I have to add doctor to that because I just wrote Maya Angelou. I need to give her the respect that's due. And I love that I was able to chart this out. It, well, I didn't chart it out. I used their chart. But I was I love that I was able to space this out and it fit and everything looks great. And I just stopped there. I didn't stitch a single tree. And there's another. Did I make this one? No, I didn't make this needle. Mind. I'll spool it. There. But I love that. I love that I was able to put her, her words on here. And I stopped right there. So apparently it made me tired. But that is my start on that. And that is in, shall we call it the Letitia bag? That's what we're calling it today. There's some other things in here. Oh boy. Gosh, do I even want to show that? I will show that. This might end up going in a giveaway pile. This was a something I... I don't know. I just wanted to see if I liked it, and I didn't. But these are a couple of diamond painting kits. Little Mandela's. I think it was four that came in a set. Not even opened. This, might, this will probably be a giveaway. Both of them. One, you know. Yeah, these are good. Some of these things that I'm finding in here, like last week I found um, a couple of random patterns that came as freebies with so much to love when I was in the bag of the month club um, that I know I'll never stitch. So I think I'm going to set these aside and do like a giveaway bin um, when I come across things like that. So that's what's in there. This is, speaking of which, another so much to love bag, which has a bunch of sewing notions on it. You see some bobbins, you see some embroidery, fun stuff. Let's see if I have, I have a tag. Let's see what it says. This says GP Tiramisu. So that is Blend in Place Tiramisu. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what it looks like. Gosh, that's what it looks like. Um, what has this pattern been through? Gosh. I, I have no idea why this pattern looks like this. Nothing, nothing is wet. I don't know why it looks like that. Maybe I just accidentally ripped it. I don't know. This is on, this is definitely 28 Count Monaco. What was that I had earlier that I thought was 28 Count Monaco? It was not. I can tell by the feel of it. I think I started something here and I changed my mind because here 
is the start for Glendon Place Tiramisu with Mr. Bean. I'm trying to keep stuff from falling. Mr. Bean. But here is my start. I don't know what I was starting down here. I started something, but I clearly changed my mind and decided I was going to frog it later. Let's see how many of those situations we come across as we do this, because I know um, I had a, I think it was the Hawk Run Hollow, whatever I started, whatever was on the Hawk Run Hollow piece that I started, that was Mermaid's Folly. And I decided I was going to frog out Hawk Run Hollow later. And same thing here. You know, future Letitia is going to be very frustrated with that. Very frustrated. Um, I haven't come across anything Asian themed yet, have I? I completely forgot about that. So this bag is my little um, So Much to Love bag, which has, let's call it Sea Life. That's fun, right? There's the front of it. I'm not showing you the inside of these bags. It's a pretty peach gingham. Ooh, I know it's going in place. Again, with my storage system, my floss storage system. Let's see here. Beautiful pair of scissors. I believe that this is one of the fobs that came from the creative curator. I'm going to stop stashing scissors in my bags. Here is a beautiful Silks for You set that was part of the, when I was in the Silk of the Month Club. Look at those beautiful colors. Mm. This is coming out of this bag, so I can love on them. We hide stuff from ourselves, don't we? Or is just me? So this one, have I shown you the pattern yet? No, I haven't. There's some wonder clips in here. Let's see. Seems like this pattern is in distress too. I don't know. This is Glendon Place Plum Pudding. Let me stay focused. So that's beautiful. And this pattern, oh, maybe it's not, I thought it was. It's not in distress, but I made working copies, so whatever, rambling. So here we are, I'm stitching this. I don't remember the count, but it's on. I, re I know the color is light avocado. <laughs> I started something that I would frog later. I think that was Quaker's Dozen that I was starting there. But here is my start on, what is this? Plum pudding. And it's on a light avocado fabric by XJU, I believe. That's pretty. I'm using the called for colors, just on a very pale green. There's the back. You know, it's funny seeing some of my stitching. I look at the back and I can tell how my stitching has improved over the years. Excluding Hades, of course. Hades don't count. But um, there were times when I first started, I would have stretched the thread over the back of this all over the place, not realizing that it would show through the fabric. Um, and I don't even think back then I was a linen stitcher. And, you know, that it shows much better easier, clearer. I don't know. It shows better through the linen when you stretch your fabric, stretch your threads. You see it a lot better than you would um, if you were stitching on Ada or even even weave. So I try not to do that when I'm stitching on linen, but it's made me a better stitcher. Um, this is already 30 minutes and I'm on my last bag of bin one. So this is the point where I'm trying to decide, is this going to be an hour long video or is it going to be a 45 minute video? Because future Letitia doesn't know what she's going to talk about when it comes to her whips. We're going to stop with this bin because future Letitia might have some haul to show. She might have some knitting. By now you already know what future Letitia got into. Anyway, what am I talking about? This is a gorgeous butterfly bag. I get on tote bags. Aren't they pretty? I think this was a bag of the month. I'm really not sure. I think I have a cold. And 
It's got a nice little floral plant print inside. Let's see what we have. Oh, this was one where it came with a Notions pouch. I might have won this, actually. I don't know if it came with it at all. Let's see what's inside. Some Current by Gentle Arts, one of my favorite reds. Current and Cinder. So that's in here, which is something that I know I was using for, this is me guessing what's in here. I know I was using um, Current and Cinder for Big Red Ship of Life. So is that what's in here? Let's see. Nope, not at all. So this is Celtic Lads by Courtney Collection. I know Diana stitched this and I was looking for this for quite some time. Not realizing, it's not very hard to find. I didn't realize what it was called or who it was by. I think I saw this stitched by someone and I was just looking for it. It's a very unusual design. Can you see this? I'm asking like you're going to answer me. It's very different. If you can see the lads in there in that Celtic design, there's Celtic lads woven in there. It's very intricate and it's very narrow. Very narrow. Um, trying to see if the stitch count is showing on here. 43 by 451. So let's see. I put this, I think this was, um, no, that's not banding, but it is on a roller frame. And I know that because the roller frame is disassembled in here. Um, and it's got my needle, which is probably quite dangerous. It's on the magnet on the roller frame. Let me take that off because if that falls out, it's on a magnet, but I don't trust it. So it's on a very narrow roller frame. As you can see, they're on eight inch bars. And this is, why am I getting sick? Why am I getting sick? I can, I can feel it. I can hear it. We don't have time for that. There is my start. And I guess I am using current. Or was that cinders? Who knows? What is that? Let's see. Well, it's probably whatever is in this Notions pouch. Because that would make the most sense. That is it. So this is current. And I only have one skein of it, which is very irresponsible because I know I have more skeins of it. I have, I have a lot of this current in cinders because of Big Red Ship of Life. I stockpiled, but I should have more in here because the colorways with these, the dye lots rather, with these two colors in particular can be quite different. I'm doing this wrong. There we go. Some of them have a lot more red. Some of them have more purple showing through. But this is that. It's going to be very narrow. That is a neat, I think, I purchased this, a set of these from her at the cross stitch floss tube retreat. No. Was it Amy that did these? No. Was this Abby, top knot stitcher? Some of, somebody was selling needle minders there, and I know I purchased from both of them, and I don't remember which one it was. But that's what's in my butterfly bag. So in this particular segment, Whip Parade Part 2, <coughs> excuse me, I don't believe we came across any um, anything that qualified for Stitch Asia, hashtag Stitch Asia. Um, so we're 35 minutes in, I'm going to stop here and I will probably pre-record, um, maybe I'll pre do another pre-recording tomorrow, um, and stick it on to the next video. I haven't decided if I'm going to put these videos out. You've probably already heard me say this in the last segment. I, I can hear myself right now repeating it. Um, but I haven't decided if I'm going to do these weekly or bi-weekly um, because the problem is particularly with this month um, the only thing I'm stitching on really is Harriet Tubman because I really wanted to finish her during uh, Black History Month 
Um, I was tempted to reach over there and show it to you, but I'm not doing that. But I don't know if week to week is enough um, progress to show you. So I was thinking of doing it bi-weekly. These updates, I don't know. You guys aren't going anywhere, neither am I. Maybe it'll just be a year-long whip parade. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through these bins. Um, maybe I'll do weekly updates for the whip parade. And then bi-weekly updates for... My active whips. Which means I could very well go into the second bin. Let's do it. I'll upload this puppy tomorrow. How about that? I'm just going to go for it. So I'll record some type of little preamble. Is that the right word? And explain that half of the stuff that I was talking about in the beginning of this video is not Lynn Boyd. Um, whatever. So this is my Santa bag from So Much to Love. And this is the front of it. And the inside, I don't know what that is. It's just a pale, pale yellowish kind of interior fabric. It looks like a hate. What is this? It's not a hate. But my floss system is consistent. This is being stitched on Newcastle 40 count Caraba, Carrara marble by color and cotton designs. I can tell you right now, I love Carrara, Carrara, Carrara marble. I can tell you right now, I love this fabric. These are all Victoria sampler threads in my block storage system a la Walmart, dollar store, I don't know. But these are different shades of gray. So what that tells me is that this is my not quite white work sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. And I believe this is a PDF, so I will insert a picture here. That's what it looks like. Here is where we are. This is a beautiful sky, not even blue, but it's very pale white with modeling of blue. Here is my start. I also made that needle miner, Double Dare. You guys remember Double Dare? Am I aging myself? Yep. That's pretty. Gosh, I love doing this. It makes me want to stitch on everything I pull out. Why do I buy new things when I have such pretty things sitting here waiting for me? And I'm not talking about current Letitia. I'm talking about past Letitia. I haven't really bought a lot of patterns lately. Hashtag, that's a lie. Because I bought some this morning. Whatever, I'm a liar. Um, but they were just like little downloads. They're still patterns. What am I talking about? They were just little downloads. No, I'm, I'm just sitting here lying. I'm definitely not purchasing as much. Like I had, I can't remember the last time I got a package from one, two, three stitch or anything like that. Um, like kidding stuff up, but I might buy some patterns on Etsy or whatever. Um, let me regroup because I am seriously rambling here. I'm feeling on the outside of this bag that's in my hand and there's something weird in here. I don't know what it is. So this is So Much to Love. I don't know. There's a peacock. There's a rooster. There's some chickens. There's... What is that? Is that a mouse? What is that? An armadillo? A snail? A dog? A cat? This is not what we're here for. This is not what we're here for. A bunny, a turtle, and they all have these funky patterns on them. Look at that peacock. What? What is that? Is that a dachshund? What is that? Totally not what we're here for. So in this bag I have, oh, it says peacocks and posies. 
Peacocks and Posies is up there. I made it into a pillow. So let's see what's in here. It might be the remnants of Peacocks and Posies. And I never took it out of the bag. So that's exactly what we're dealing with here. Oh, let's see what's else in here. in here. This is fun. We have some waist beads that I bought on Etsy in my project pack. It's probably looking for those at some point in time. Okay. Okay, this 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 is a fun bag. Some more waist beads from Etsy. Yeah. Yeah. So I have some sulky threads in here. These are the sulky threads that I used. I stitched that on 40 count spicy carrot um, and the peacocks I'm sorry if you just heard my stomach these are the colors that I used for the peacocks all of the peacocks were done in sulky thread 1 over 2 beautiful coverage I think there's another color in here it is a what do you call this thing you guys know what it's called with a needle minder inside. I know I'm the most organized stitcher you have ever seen. In this one bag, we have a, what's it called? A bead, a bobby bead, tacky bob. It's a tacky bob. We have a tacky bob. We have waist beads. Um, we have, if you guys don't know what waist beads are, look them up. It's, it's very random for a project bag. We have yet another Tunisian crochet hook. Last week, we also found a Tunisian crochet hook inside of a project bag. Here is the other sulky that I used. So I used some random dinky dyes for the motifs, the floral motifs, and then I used the sulky thread, I think I've already said this, for the peacock motifs. There are some Mary Arden e needles that I used in there. I, I, don't, I don't care for these. Does anybody like Mary Arden needles? I don't care for them. Um, and then I used some random Dinky dies. There's nothing to show you in here, really. Oh, I used some random water lilies, too, I think. This is a bag that I need to empty out and recycle my threads. Here are some random threads that I must have received from a 123 stitch order. This is there is a AAA battery in here. Um, there's the other sulky. And I knew there was another one because this, this was the color that I remember I loved so much. So these were my peacock colors. Yeah, I need to just set this bag all together and clean up this hot mess that's in here. And then I can reuse this bag. Because clearly, oh, nose itches. Sorry, guys. Nose itches. Get up close and personal. Um, so time to hand sanitize a little bit. This has been a bit of a weird video, hasn't it? This was something that I thought I was going to record to attach to a video for next week. And now it looks like we're going to have a surprise upload tomorrow. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do one week where it's just whip parade. And then every other week I'll do after whip updates and whip parade. So one week will be one bin with active whips. The next week will be two bins at a time. And Noah just sent me a message. Hi, Noah. You mentioned me in a story. Thank you. I have to look at that later. Hey, Noah. All right. This is a fun one. Another embroidery hoop. Look how little. This is, I think this is the antique peacock one. I didn't show you my bag. This is an Evertote wedge tote, which I absolutely love. I absolutely love. I love the bag. I love the designer. Hi, Caroline. So look at this beautiful bottom. And it's, I love her wedge totes. I think they're typically, I won't say typically, because they can be used for anything, obviously. But I think the wedge totes are usually used for knitting, but I love them for cross stitch. They have that wide bottom. But I love the fish design. Oh, I love a fish design. 
And then the inside is a simple white with a gray pattern. So I think this is my antique. And I have a matching notion bag. Let's see what's in here. It's probably the thread of them smart. And it is. It is Krynik Silk Mori. And it's so funny. It says 100% silk dry clean only. It's funny that it says dry clean. So this is 5105A. And I must have two skeins because that's the other one that I quite simply wrapped around the label. And, <coughs> excuse me. We have a business card. Oh. This was, I think it was, I don't think it came with this bag, but I think I just put it in here or maybe it did. This was something that Caroline sent me because I remember she was, I must have talked about um, how much I wanted to try Vicki Clayton's hand dyed fibers, hand dyed silks. And at the time she wasn't doing it anymore. She's back by the way. And yes, I'm on that bandwagon. I'm all over it. Anyway, at the time she wasn't dying them anymore. And Caroline, I want to say she did. What did you do this with? I don't know. Caroline stitched something and she showed it in one of her very first videos. I want to say it was Cirque de Cirqueless. I don't know. And I'm saying that wrong, but this is the, the actual silk that she used. And because she's such a sweetheart, with something that I ordered, she sent me the remainder of it so I could have some some hand dyed fibers by Vicki Clayton. And it's in this little notions pouch. Oh, how about I show you the whip that's in here? How about I do that? Um, I will try to insert a picture here. of what it looks like because I do know off the top of my head that it was off of Etsy and this is where we are. I love browns and blues together. Look at the little piggy needle miter. I love browns and blues together. And that's our progress. It's gonna be fun finding the pictures for all of these patterns to insert because I'm, I'm gonna have to search. There's my Evertotes invoice. And there's the pattern that I printed out. So that is in my Evertote bag. This is, I think Emily turned me onto these bags off of Amazon. It was like a pack of 10 for like 10 bucks or something, but they have this fabric exterior, but they're not unlike the, um, the mesh bags where you get them in bulk off of Amazon. They're different. Um, actually, here's a second one. They came in different colors. Um, I like these, but I noticed that the inside, which is like this vinyl, um, I'll show you if I find one where there's an example. It's this vinyl -y inside. Sometimes you find that the pattern, the ink from the pattern transfers onto that vinyl, so I don't buy these anymore. But I have a, a handful of them. So this is, I'm going to say this is Shades of Blue by Northern Expressions Needlework. I think that's what it is because I'm blueing, pulling out random blue threads from Dinky Dyes. Maybe they're not random. Maybe they're the called for blues, but these are Dinky Dyes blues. And this is on 28 count. No, it's not. It's 36 count antique white. It is that. It is shades of blue. I'll insert a picture here. No, I won't. Because here it is. Shades of blue. On 36 count antique white. What is that next word? Edinburgh. Okay, it just says E-D-I-N. Oh, yeah. And here's my start. commitment to these projects, am I? 
a lot of these starts are just like a corner. Hold on. But that's where we are. Make sure I put everything back in here. And this was started on August 17th, 2017. This is, I don't know, the other Amazon project bag I showed you. Ooh. Ooh, what do we have here? This looks like it's a bag of patterns. Like I just had some random patterns that I just stuck in here. All right. I know that this came from a retreat, so some of these might be freebies, but I remember purchasing this at a New Jersey retreat, so these must have been some freebies that I pulled off the table, and some I purchased from Needleworkers Delight. So let's look at it. So this is Let Me Flee, the Let Me Flee sampler from the Wyndham Collection. And it says... Oh, let me flee from all the world and live alone to God. Which I'll probably change. That, but I did like the motif. And I'm not clear. Is that border stitched? Probably. I don't know. Probably. And I, it looks like I kitted it up in New Jersey. This is the Rainforest booklet. When I worked at Frank's a million years ago, I remember seeing this. So I know, yep, 1992. That's the year that I graduated from high school. I know I have seen this in Frank's a million years ago. This was probably on the freebie table. Yep at the floss tube retreat and I grabbed it up next we have stop and stitch the flowers by blue ribbon designs I might have purchased this in New Jersey at the at Needleworkers Delight might have been on the freebie table I don't know Pierre Peacock I know I purchased this at Needleworkers Delight and this is oh 40 count silk gauze and it's the kit I didn't stitch that it's just the picture I haven't started it yet that's what it's gonna look like so this is gonna be 40 count I think you stitch on silk gauze one over one and it's pre-mounted for handling that's what it says oh, look at that little logo she's going to town um, And this one is called For the Birds by Bygone Stitches. I know I purchased that at Needleworkers Delight. So apparently what I did was just take these random bat patterns and put them in this project bag for no reason at all. There's no method to this madness. But that's what's in this bin. This is one of my favorite so much to love bags an autumn leaves bag that I believe was in the mail I got this right before I got in the car to drive to Stitch Fest um, in Northern Virginia because Melissa was there and she had the same bag but it, uh, she had just gotten it recently as well this is look at this beautiful Silks for you, Hank. I'm losing my light. Silks for you, Hank. I know what this is. This is the sunflower that I was going to stitch for Troy. And there is some metallic floss that is going awry in here. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up real quick. Amongst yourselves while I just line this up. I'm still winding. Okay. 
still, still winding. Okay. Thought we were done. All right. That wasn't awkward. Um, we have a stash tea bag in here. She would often send tea bags with her bags of the month. Um, we have some beads that I was going to use for the sunflower. We have a tube of chapstick because you need your chapstick. And we have Is this one Deseterata? It sure is. My Deseterata flosses. The silks from Deseterata. I don't know why it's in this bag. Oh, we have um, another chapstick. Sweet Papaya. The other one, since you asked, I know you asked, the other flavor was Aloha Coconut. We have a highlighter. Should probably take that out. That could be dangerous in there like that. And then we have the sunflower itself. I know it's from um, Landmark. What is that place called? Landmark Tapestries. I have it in here strategically so, so I didn't have to make a working pattern. So This is the sunflower. The Long Sunflower, it's actually called. It's from the Long Floral Collection. <coughs> and I was going to stitch that for Troy because she asked me to stitch her a sunflower for her dorm when she went off to college. She is um, finishing up her sophomore year now. And uh, let's see how far we got, shall we? Why do I have this tape on the edge? What, what was I doing? That's where I started. And I didn't like it. And I think I was going to redo it on this 25 count fabric that we have here. 32 count. So this is actually going to be a restart. So I started it, well, I started it on this, whatever the count this fabric is, and I didn't like how it was looking. Looks like I was trying to do the border tent stitch with my sunflower. I don't know what I was doing. I'm just going to put this away. Put this away. I should put this Deseterata floss in with that other stuff from Peacocks and Posies that I need to sort through. Because that's now sash. I'm not using that actively. That bag was a bit of a mess, too. Here's a cute... Is this an Evertoads bag? It is. Look at the little, are they ghosts? Yes, because it says Spooky and Boo on it. I was going to call them little marshmallow people, Caroline. I was about to call these little marshmallow people. They're ghosts. They're not marshmallow people. <laughs> but they're happy ghosts. I was about to call them marshmallow people. Is this an Evertoads bag? There's the interior. Very pretty. And judging from my handy dandy key tag, this says Landmark Tapestries. Don't know what that means. There's a pretty notions pouch. There's nothing in it. Oh gosh. Oh boy. This is a hot oh, I know what this is. This is literally the collection of the Landmark Tapestry. Tapestry collection, tapestry pillow collection. Caroline just recently finished Savan, which I know is in here and which is likely what this whip is. These must be the, the DMCs for it. This is the ink circles pattern that Caroline sent me, likely along with this project bag. Why do I 
I have this huge piece of fabric. Was I planning to do something crazy like stitch them all on one piece? Was I going to do something crazy like that? I think I was. Because this is a huge... There is my beginning. I think I was starting with Arjesh and not Savan. There's, there's, I'm well on our way to our tapestry wall, Caroline. I'm, I'm doing great. Arjesh, I'm almost there. Yeah, almost there. So here's the pattern. So this is Arjesh. Look at that. I can see why I started with this one. It's pretty. Kali. Kazak. Moosh. Shatak. And Sassoon. Where's Savon? Why don't I have that? You know why? Because Arjesh and Savan are the exact same thing. They're just in different colorways. That's right. So the tapestry... I'm saying the tapestry pillow collection. This is reading the tapesta pillow collection. So there are six in total, but in different colorways. So what Caroline stitched that we know and love as Savan is the same thing as this, but I chose a different colorway, which makes it Arjesh. There we go. And why was I planning to stitch these all on one piece of fabric? What was I, what was I thinking about? 25 count, one over one. I think this is 25 count. Definitely, yeah, one over one. I think I was planning to stitch all of them on one piece of fabric because that's how I roll. I think it's a brilliant idea. Okay. This is an action-packed little bag too. There's a lot. Can fit a lot of stuff into these upper tote bags. You should get one or five. All right. This is another Letitia bag. There's a lot of crinkly stuff in here. Acre beads. Is it a shadow I don't know. I'm so proud of it. And it's so imperfect. My corners. Look at my corners. They're, you know. I don't care. I'm proud. Look at my corners. What in the world? What in the octagonal corners is going on here? So this is Princess Eliana. Mm. Yeah, I can't I can't pull my corners out. And the fun star interior. I'm, I'm so proud of these little bags. So this is Princess Eliana. That I am changing her skin tone and using Lupita Nyongo as my muse. So she's gonna have that beautiful brown, rich skin tone. I might have to. Excuse me, did you hear that? I might have to reach out to Gary to ask him what color skin tone he used for his Lady Justice, because that's where I'm going with that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, dark, rich skin tone. But I'm using Lupita Nyong'o as my muse because I want to say it was at the Oscars. She wore this gorgeous Tiffany blue dress up against her dark brown skin. It was just magic. If I remember, I'll insert a picture here. It's just magic. And that's why I'm stitching it on this color fabric. And let's see how far I got. That's how far I got. I don't even really know what I'm looking at here. It's, it's her dress, I know that. 
And then I stopped my little yes queen needle minder. Yes. So that's fun. That's where we are with that. I started that on 51620. And there's, that's my, in my Leticia bag. I'm very proud of this. I put in a zipper. I, I, yeah. This is the last bag um, that's in here. Um, but also what's in here, this was very sweet. Um, when I moved into this house, there's a story, I don't know, I must have shared it on Instagram because I probably wasn't doing, no, I know I wasn't doing plus tube at the time. There's a story um, about when we purchased this home. It was something that happened so quickly Um but I knew in my spirit that it was meant to be ours. Um, and there was something motivating me to, to move quickly. And it was almost, I told my husband the whole time, my father, I could hear my father's voice in my ear. He was like guiding me. Um, he was with me. I felt him. I felt him. I heard him. I, I heard him instinctively. He was guiding me. Um, but anyway, long story short, um, on the day that we closed, or the day, either the day that we closed, not the day that we closed, but the day that we found out that it was ours um, and we had the closing date and everything. We came back here and the three of us um, were standing in the dining room and we were looking at the back at the backyard and the deck is right off the dining room. And we were standing there, the three of us just looking outside and just kind of having a moment or whatever. And this bright red cardinal it flew so close, it flew so close, and it just stood there and it looked at the three of us. And they say that when a cardinal comes to visit you, particularly if it comes to visit you in your yard, um, it's a sign that a loved one who has passed on is with you. Um, and they often make their presence known. And I looked at this cardinal and I felt it. I felt it. I felt my father's presence. Um, I felt it. And I, I don't want to go too deeply into that. But even after like Troy and Joe walked away, the cardinal flew back and it just sat there. And I just looked at it and it looked at me. And it was just this moment that never happens. Um, like ever. And then on my birthday, which was not long after that, on my birthday, I was in the kitchen and I was washing dishes and I was, or making dinner, I was doing something. And I was looking out the window, at the kitchen window. And the cardinal came and just sat there. And I felt it again. Um, and it was always this thing with my father, whenever it was my birthday, he wanted to be the first to wish me a happy birthday. And he almost made like a game out of it, just like even trying to beat my husband to wishing me a happy birthday. So when I saw this cardinal, it just felt like my, you know, it felt like his presence. I, I just felt it in my spirit. And if you believe in that type of thing, then you, you know um, and you understand. And if you don't, just, you know, enjoy the story. But um, anyway, my goodness. So I shared this story, not quite as, as deeply as I just shared it now, but I shared this story on um, Instagram when I, I purchased a pattern um, with a cardinal in it. And I typically don't purchase anything that is like um, Christmassy or anything like that. I don't do that. Um, not into seasonal or holiday type themes. 
but I purchased this cardinal so I could stitch it and it was a Christmassy type of um, pattern. You'll see it, I'm sure, eventually. But it wasn't like in your face Christmas, but it was a cardinal. I wanted a cardinal pattern. And right about that same time, Diana, it is Kismet, posted um, one of her uh, project bag sales and there was a bag that had cardinals on it. And it wasn't like super in your face. It was like more wintry, um, but it had cardinals on it. And I looked at it and I was like, oh man, I need to get that. But I think it was a precursor to the sale. It was a preview, not a precursor. It was a preview to her sale. So when I saw it, it wasn't available yet. Um, and apparently when it came out, I wasn't, I either missed it or wasn't thinking about it. Very long story short, one day Diana reached out to me and she asked me for my new address. Um, and of course, you know, we have a relationship, so I gave it to her and the package came in the mail and it was the cardinal bag. It was the cardinal bag that I saw and it was from Caroline and she sent it to me just, you know, remembering the story and remembering, you know, the meaning that cardinals now have to me. And she said, this bag is a gift and it was just so thoughtful. So what I'm looking at right now, I'm, I'm like, you know, pull it together, Letitia, pull it together. So what I'm looking at right now is not the cardinal bag. After all of that, you will see the cardinal bag. It's in there. Um, but what I'm looking at right now is the little gift that Diana sent along with it, just so she could be part of, um, the fun of Caroline's gift. And she sent me some beautiful linen with, um, water lilies. That was a really long intro to this package and tears and a mess and whatever. It's fine. So here's the bag, <laughs> the last bag, um, in this second bin, excuse me, in this third bin, last bag, Garon tote bag. And it has, what are these guys? It's definitely sunflowers. What are these birds? Are these chickadees? It's like this random tear running down my face. What are these birds? Spa not sparrows, chickadees. I'm gonna go with chickadees. I know somebody will tell me what it is. I'm not a bird person. So in here we have some green fabric. No idea what that is. We have some rose garden. I know what this is. There's a story behind this. Not really. This is my quilted bees from Long Dog Samplers. Try to find the picture of it. I know it's in here because this was not a PDF. Don't know what my husband... That was Alexa. My husband's in the kitchen doing something. Here it is. Quilted bees. So, now I'm questioning my life choices looking at this fabric. I'm doing this on a green... Depending on what this looks like, my progress looks like, I'm changing it. Because I don't know why I chose green. I should have cho chosen like a neutral. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. Yep, I'm changing it. I didn't get far. So here's my progress. And I really liked it on the green at first. But I don't know why I chose... Sorry, my needle winder fell. That's the needle binder. I made that one too. Did I make this one? Yes, I did. Did I? Yeah, I did. This video is a mess. Um, but I, I know it's okay. So that's my start. It looks good. Here's what I'm struggling with. I found this fabric. I know it's going to be a pillow because of this fabric. I found this fabric. It's called French General. By, I don't know. I think I found it on Etsy or no, I found it on one, two, three stitch. It's going to be a pillow. This is the backing for the pillow. Look at the fabric. Let me open it up. A little bit more. 
That did nothing, by the way. What I just did, it did nothing. This is the fabric. You see the hexagons? Look. Look. Look at the pattern and look at the fabric. Right? Now why the hell did I pick this? Why did I do that? I don't know. I don't know. Why did I do that? It would look so much better on like a bone color, wouldn't it? And I always had this fabric. I found this fabric before I even started this piece. Because as soon as I saw it, I knew I was like, okay, it's going to be a pillow because of that fabric. So I don't know why I chose this green. I think I was trying to be different and it's not working. No, that's going to be restarted. But it looks good. Right? Anyway, the sad story behind this is um, the threads. I don't think I have... I think I bought one of each of the threads when I purchased the pattern and I don't have enough. I know I don't have enough because it calls for multiple skeins, right? So I placed an order this year, last year, excuse me, it was last year, I think it was like early last year, early-ish, but it's definitely um, during the pandemic. And I ordered the... What is that smell? Is my husband cooking? I thought we were having Chinese tonight. I think my husband is cooking some kale or something. He had it sitting in the sink and now I smell something cooking, but I thought we were having Chinese. And this is sometimes what happens in the Crafty Curator videos. Whatever. Um... What was I talking about? Oh yeah, so I ordered one skein of each of the called for threads when I purchased this pattern. Um, but I need more than that and I ordered what I needed because I noticed that, especially with the Gentle Art samplers threads, they were becoming hard to find um, once the pandemic was in full swing. So I was like, let me go ahead and order these now. And the only place that I could order them, find them, was from a shop um, in Canada. And I'm not going to say the name of it because I know they're all doing the best. Everybody's doing the best they can. But I still haven't gotten them. And I've emailed them like a lot and they respond very quickly and they're telling me, okay, they had to reorder some of them. And then they said that finally that they mailed them out on December 8th of last year. So that's two months ago, but it is Canada and sometimes it takes a while. I don't know. That's a sad tale, isn't it? Anyway, so anyway, that's it for bins two and three. We are going to edit and upload this tomorrow. And um, I guess that's all I have to say about that. So I'll be back next week with part three of the Whip Parade. Um, and my active Whip updates where you'll see Harriet and you'll see... Prairie School or Alphabet, I forgot the name. Um, I might show my Copeland shawl that I've been working on and maybe some other things. I haven't shown, I don't think I've ever shown any type of knitting or crocheting on this channel. So anyway, I'm rambling. Um, I wish you all a great week. I hope that when um, we meet again next time that Texas is doing much better. Um, that everybody's doing much better, everybody's safe, everybody's healthy, or on the road to recovery. Um, yeah, but in the meantime, we have floss tube and we have cross stitch and thank goodness for distractions, right? So, um, the sun is gonna, has gone down. I'm gonna go see what's going on with the Chinese food situation or if 
other plans have been made. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's it. And until next time, talk to you when we talk to each other and have a great week. Bye-bye. Not an awkward ending at all.